So one of the other things we can uh, spend some time understanding about hydrogen atom wave functions is what the energies of the electrons are when they're in those particular wave functions. So we've seen previously that the energy of an electron in uh, a wave function of the hydrogen atom or a hydrogen-like ion is this relatively simple expression, minus a half atomic number squared divided by the n. That's the quantum number of the uh, uh, wave function. In fact, I could write the energy of an nlm state is the same value. So the value of l, the value of m don't matter at all. We just divide by the value of n squared and then multiply by that by some energy, some collection of constants that have the units of energy that we call a Hartree. That unit of energy is 27.2 in units of electron volts, which are pretty common for working with atomic energies. Or if you prefer it in SI units, it's this very small number of joules, 4.36 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. So for one thing, we can draw an energy ladder and ask ourselves what it looks like that the atoms have this energy of minus some uh, constants times n squared. Uh, so I guess let me actually put 0, since the energies are negative, let me put a marker for 0 up here. Energies are rising in this direction. The lowest energy an electron and a hydrogen atom can have, if it's a hydrogen atom in particular with z equals 1, the lowest energy can have is when n equals 1, so the energy is going to be uh, minus half of a Hartree. So negative 13.6 eV. So that would be for the n equals 0, uh, I'm sorry, n equals 1 state for the electron. The next state up the ladder is going to be the n equals 2 state. Now the energy is going to be negative a half times 1 over 2 squared for a hydrogen atom. So uh, half times a uh, quarter is an eighth, so 75% of the way up towards zero, we find the n equals two state. So I'll stop labeling these with specific values, but that's minus an eighth of a heart tree. So if this was the n equals one state, n equals two is a quarter as large, uh, as a quarter is negative, the n equals three state is gonna be three squared or one ninth as negative, so that's gonna be somewhere around here. We're also gonna have n equals four state, n equals five state, n equals six state. So those states get packed tighter and tighter together as we go to higher and higher n values, and then in the limit where n becomes very large, the energy is becoming zero. We're dividing this number by a very large number, so it's a very small negative quantity. So our energy ladder looks like this. There's a big gap from the first state to the second, and then a smaller gap and a smaller gap still, and those gaps get smaller and smaller as we asymptotically approach an energy of zero. The other thing we can do with those energies is do some uh, numerical calculations. And one of the things we know the energies tell us is how likely those states are to be occupied. So let's consider this problem. We, we know now, uh, let's say, let's calculate the probability of occupying a 2s orbital. So remember, the 2s orbital is the same as the n equals 2 spherical orbital, so the 2, 0, 0 orbital. And to make things relatively simple, we can say, what's the probability of occupying the 2s uh, wave function relative to the probability of occupying the 1s wave function? So what's the probability be of being in this excited state relative to the probability of being in this ground state? And we know uh, that Boltzmann tells us that that's just going to be energy of the 2s state or the 2, 0, 0 state over kt with a negative sign in the exponent. We divide that by e to the minus energy of the 1s state over kt. And then because I'm taking this ratio, I don't have to worry about partition functions. The actual probability of the 2s state is e to the minus energy over kt divided by a partition function. But if I divide by the partition function on the top and on the bottom, then those two will cancel. So altogether, this is e to the minus difference in energy between those two, where the difference in energy is the energy of the numerator minus the energy of the state referred to in the denominator. So uh, let's think about that difference in energy first. So that E of the 2, 0, 0 state minus energy of the 1, 0, 0 state, we know how to calculate those energies. Energy of the 2, 0, 0 state, we've just uh, thought about that a minute ago, is minus a half times 1 over 4, so minus an eighth of a Hartree. 
And I guess I should specify Since I'm doing this with z equals 1, since I've plugged z equals 1 into this equation, I'm doing this calculation for a hydrogen atom. If I were doing it for a helium plus ion, it would be different numbers because I would use a different atomic mass. So energy of the 2, 0, 0 state is minus an eighth of a heart tree. Energy of the 1, 0, 0 state, as we've said, is minus a half of a heart tree. So altogether, that adds up to positive 3 eighths of a heart tree, negative an eighth plus a half. And if we multiply, let's do the calculation in SI units, if we multiply this number by three eighths, what we find is the difference in energy between these two states. This is the delta E that we're talking about between the n equals two and the n equals one state. That particular difference in energy is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. That number by itself is not terribly meaningful. What's meaningful is the ratio of that energy to kT. So um, we'll need to know what temperature we're interested in. So let's say we've got some hydrogen atoms at room temperature, 298 Kelvin, and we'd like to know how likely it is that they're in the 2s orbital relative to the probability of being in the 1s orbital. So the value of kT as our benchmark for energies uh, is Boltzmann's constant multiplied by the temperature we're interested in. And that number works out to be, again, something small. For times 10 to the minus 21 joules. So those are both small numbers, but notice that the small number that's kT is quite a bit smaller, 10 to the minus 21st, quite a bit smaller compared to the small number that's the delta E. That's still small, but it's 10 to the minus 18th joules. So this number is several hundred times larger than kT. So that ratio When we calculate the ratio of delta E over kT, that ratio is 397. And if we convert that to a power of 10 rather than a power of E, we find that that ratio is 10 to the minus 173. So that's a, an almost unimaginably small number. The probability of finding an electron in the 2s state is so small that if we have a universe full of hydrogen atoms lying around at 298 Kelvin, chances are we would not see a single one of them in the 2s state. They're all going to prefer, greatly prefer to be in the, in the 1s state, have a higher probability of being in the 1s state. So uh, what that means is this energy difference, at least at room temperature, is so much larger than kT that all of the, essentially all of the electrons occupy the n equals 1 state. They never spontaneously uh, find themselves in the, in the 2s state just due to thermal excitation. What that means is that's the reason why, for example, in general chemistry, if I asked you, tell me the electron configuration for a hydrogen atom, you would say hydrogen is a 1s1 electron configuration. The, the single electron in a hydrogen atom is found in the 1s orbital. You didn't need to consider the possibility that, well, sometimes it might be in the 2s orbital or the 3s or the 5d orbital or something else. The probability of ever finding at room temperature a hydrogen in an orbital other than the 1s, uh, the electron in an orbital other than the 1s orbital, is vanishingly small. So we can, with very much confidence, say the electron configuration is just 1s1 and leave all the other possibilities alone.